Hey everybody, Kent and Brandon here for Thursday Night Poker. It's the main event, the Winter CSOP Championship, which is the largest main event that we've had to date. Yes. Number of players wise? Number of players wise. 180 something? 181. Three day ones, right? Yeah. All at the max. We're down to seven. I knew it was going to be big. Thursday was like 40. Which is normally... Usually like 20. Because normally day 1A, really in any tournament, is, is the always the weakest field. And I don't mean the, weakest field like player-wise, it's, it's just the, the smallest. I, do you think it's the strongest? I think so. Let's just throw this out there because they're doing their stuff right now. What do you think, if you're a poker player, like let's take the... Like I don't the, know if the HPT main event. Main event okay, HPT main week, event. This weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday will for sure be the hardest play. Just the best players play yeah, Thursday. Right. Why is that? Probably because they're not... They're going to fire multiple bullets. And they don't work. Can you re-enter into the HPT? I think it's one re-entery per day. So, so you, can can fire, you can fire six times. Two bullets each day, that's it. Yeah. $1,100 buy-in? 1650 So that's one of their meaty ones, right? Yeah. Well, cool. Well, we have 180 players, 181. What else we got? $360 buy-in? 360 flat. Whole bunch of last outs. Whole bunch of last outs. Last outs were super juicy this time. Can you explain last outs? Because I don't know if everybody knows what last outs are. Or give me a quick rundown of what's the difference between last longer and last out. I was confused too. I know the difference between them. I just don't always remember which one's which. Last outs, you have to buy in every time you buy into the. So tournament. if you buy into the deep stack, you buy into the twenty dollar last out, which they always have, yep. and you brick. You're out of the last out, and you're out of the tournament. Then yep. if you are lucky enough to re-enter, which you can do at yep. CCG. For five levels. And you re-enter, but now you got to re-ante into those last outs because right. you're you are no longer a brand in new them. player. Yeah, you're a brand new player who just walked in the door. And which is the difference between rebuy and re-entry. Yes. Right? Whereas a last longer, once you're in the last outs, as long as you're in the tournament, so a multi-day flight tournament, if you buy in on Thursday into the $200 last longer... Yeah, and you there. brick Thursday, and then you play Friday, and you brick Friday, and then you play Saturday, and you brick Saturday, and then you final chance it, buy in on Sunday before the day two starts, which is the last chance you can do in any of the main event tournaments at CCG. You're still in that $200 last longer. Right. That's pretty juicy. Right. So last longers have an advantage to the people that are going to fire multiple bullets. Because they only have to buy in one time. Yes. It's pretty cool. All right, well, action has started. We are at uh, 25.50 with a 50,000 big blind ante. You got Kamara in a five seat, little king eight suited versus all those king queen who so raised. He's rolling on a free seat, right? Who is? Kumar? I believe so, yeah. I think he won a he free seat. He was a points seat. list. Uh, yeah, he won the stack, the big old stack, or got second when Rob won it with one chip or whatever. Right. The opening one at St. Andrews, I think. And then that, he really piggybacked yeah, the yeah, shit out of Yeah, I think he only had one more. One more cash, but that got him a free That's seat. what you really need. You need a big cash in a big tournament, a stack, a mega stack, something with a lot of players in it. And at that point, you just squeak in on one of these $60 pineapple events that's got three right. tables they in it. Third place. You get top five, and mm -hmm. you really can squeak into the yep. to the points list winner. Because we did give away five free seats. Now, we say free, but they're not actually free. CCG pays for them. Right. Free to the players. Free to the players. The prize pool is still 100% because some guy's like, well, that's, that's crap. He's like, you put in 10 free seats? And I was like, well, yeah. And he's like, that's bullshit. And I was like, how could that be mad? How are you mad at me for giving away 10 seats? He's right. like, well, you don't put the money in it. And I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. No, that is not true. Right. That cost me $3,000 to put those players in, which yes. we add to the prize pool 100%. So if there's 181 entries, if you want a promo seat or not, that – $300 in the prize pool is absolutely in the prize pool. Because right. some people don't always believe that. And it absolutely happens. I know because I had to cough it up. <laughs> I know because usually on Sundays you're like, Brandon, we're running a lot of money here. We need some more money to put into this prize pool. <laughs> <laughs> make, make more money. All right, so we got some regulars at the table. You got uh, Aldo in the Cubs hat right in front of you there. You got Bobby with his wild-haired hat. Uh, it's a KJ special. Uh, Is it a Kumar hat or a visor? It's a visor with a fake hair on top. So okay. technically it's a hat because it goes over all the way on the top. Uh, you got Nancy over there in the eight seat. Uh, Kumar's in the five. I forget the two seat's name, but he's a, a pretty reg reg. Mike? Yeah, it might be Mike. We'll find out in a second here. 
So Kamar flops uh, middle pair here with his five, but he had the best hand going in. I'm sorry, the six seat flopped to five. We'll find his name out here in a minute. Yeah. I think I change it eventually. I hope. Otherwise, six is just kind of a cool name. Yeah, it kind of is. Kind of wanted just my name to be six from like, now on. Like, like seven. Like eleven. Eleven's pretty badass. Oh, I that's... mean, how many people do you know who have names that are numbers? They're not just badass. Right. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, eleven. She's awesome. She's awesome. Two. Remember two. number two from, uh, not Wayne's World. Same guy. Spy who shagged me. What the hell is his name? Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Who does number two work for? You don't remember that part? No. That's good. All right, Nancy's in the Mike eight Myers seat. Like yep. Got the plaques out. 100K plaques. 100K plaques. They look nice. Nancy oh. with an ace nine suited. Under the gun, though, not a great spot to... Well, unless you're Nancy, who's just like... I guess that's the way you play ace nine under the gun. She's got eleven bigs, ten so, bigs. Yeah, I mean she's looking for something. Handed. Ace nine, actually, you're right. Ooh, Bobby. It's with actually the ace like jack. probably the really really close. Like ace. Seven it's borderline is range. Fold, yeah. And ace ten is like automatic. Auto Look, in. Ooh, Bobby is folding ace jack there. Nancy's, she's getting credit. And Nancy's a strong player. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be sexist or anything weird, but I think most men when they see women this far in the tournament like, they give them the credit like alright, she's legit, like yep. tight, aggressive, don't get involved unless you got a hand. And really Bobby just folded ace-jack to her. Yep. Like, that's almost borderline like, like ace -queen is chicken there, right? shit. Right? Like, <laughs> ace-queen, you're guaranteed going in. So right. where, I kind of feel that like ace-jack's the, ace the line. I mean, you could, maybe that's the fence. Ace-10, you could give up there even though we know he's way good. Which is like, you know, if you think about it, her line is like ace nine going in there and then hit to call and need to have a little bit better than that range, yep. which is like ace queen. Yeah. So it's really they're both on the border. She's um, at the bottom of her shoving range and he's at the top of his folding range or right. bottom, bottom of his Bottom of his fold. calling, whatever right. it is. Bottom of his calling range or top of his Right there, range. they're both there, yeah. All right, so we've still missed the other half of the table's names. Well, it's definitely Mike in the two seat. Okay. His la yeah, well, no, Mike's in the three seat. Mike's we'll, in the three seat. We'll have to find out. Nancy, 7-5, checks up that uh, big blind. I might have put a little pressure on Aldo there. Folds to the small blind who just limps in. Ooh, yeah. She flops an open ender. So All I think the blinds though. are 20,000, 40,000, not 2550. Okay. Oh, missed. yeah, call 20. Check. But the first hand was weird because it was 50, but... All right, so Aldo has the second nut flush draw and a pair of eights here. Nancy has an open ender. Open ender with three hearts on the board. Yeah. It's not a great, no. not a great, not a great flop for Nancy. No. Would have been an awesome flop if it was a black king. That's true. That would have been a better flop. Much better. Yeah, but if I'm making wishes, uh, it's not one of the wishes no. I would make. It looks like she is going to make the call. She's going to peel off another card here. So I think maybe she thinks that if, if she... She drills a four here that she's going to get paid off. Yeah. Nine, I think you don't get paid off, but the four, you you get paid off. Obviously not hard. Five's close. It's close. It's close. Check. Check, she's check. She's probably just going to check and hope for five. She could, she's thinking about firing a bullet here. Or go for the bluff. She's thinking about it. Wow. She's getting a plaque out. 150? Yeah, 150. Damn. Well, she's kind of putting all on exactly what he's got, right? An eight with a heart. In or it. just like a big heart or like right. one pair of eights. He had both, but, you know, she's trying to get both of those exact hands to fold. And he had both of those hands in one hand. And she did. And he did. Nice move, Nancy. Making moves. He just, he's gone. He just ran away. That's it. All those gone. <laughs> he's just. <laughs> I've never seen Ah, you know what? You know what? I'm can't, out. Can't beat her. I'm out. <laughs> can't beat her. I'm leaving. See you guys later. <laughs> It's, it sucks when you have to pee and the blinds are that big and you're like a short stack in the tournament. Yeah. All right, Mike is the three seed, so we drilled that name. Bobby Boom. is in the yellow there, Kumar in the So blue. we got everybody but the two seed. And he's a reg. I think his name's Will? I'm going to – if I had to drill a name right now, it would be Will. I'm trying to look. John. John is the six seed. So I, I – John there six. Johnny six. Johnny six. Johnny six in a Sox uh, shirt, which I love. I know you're a big Cubs fan. You're wearing a Cubs hat right now. Yeah. Sox are making some moves, though. Yeah. I mean, considering they were borderline worst 
team out there just terrible. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see the the Sox get back to at least 2005-ish. At least. Well, I mean, close. close. Kind of like, I'd like to see him get to the playoffs. The I mean, the here's Sox the nice thing is, no, it's not. 19, 1920s Sox is my favorite Sox team of all time. You know why I'm a Sox fan and not a Cubs fan? Because they cheated? They're the only team that had the balls to actually cheat the World Series. It's great. Yeah. What other team would do that? It's fantastic. Well. I mean, besides Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, and Boston. And Boston. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, it was funny. It, was, it just took 100 years to have the... Yeah, um, I was watching... Um, what was I watching? I was watching... Or no, I was, I was on Twitter, and Joey Ingram was like, can we please get the same guys who did the investigatory work on the MLB to, to do the stuff at Stones? Because, like... Awesome. They, they just did, figured it out. And, and they didn't... They, and they didn't... That's a pretty hefty fine. I mean, five million. Who cares to those guys that would be like... But It's a speeding ticket. First and second round draft picks for that's two huge. years. That's and the GM and coach fired. Well, Are they sus- fired or suspended? No, no, they got suspended for a year, but then the, ma- the owner fired him. Both. Yeah. I mean, obviously, right? I mean, he's got to take a stand there. Right, he was in on it. Slate. But, I mean, he's got to say so face. So are all the players that don't get All right, Aldo with 10 here raises. Nancy calls with the king-queen. She's got two overs. On the button. Flops both Pink. of them. Yep. But the 10 gives Aldo a gut shot, so... It does. Never a great, uh, never great when you got tens and you see all face cards. Nope, monkey, this monkey, is, monkey this on the is flop. Nancy's uh, he, range she, here. She gonna bet he gonna fold, miserably folds. Yeah. I would have miserably folded. I mean, too. tens are like just so money. And yeah. Just get Glad he didn't do something crazy and like yeah. bet half represent, his stack. Yeah, yeah. Like, represent that he had. So Kumar two point three. Because she's million. really hoping he's got an ace there. <sighs> It's Tom. Tom. We weren't even close. Sorry, Tom. Shout out to Tom, who is regular. He comes a lot. He's one of those guys where I absolutely recognize his face. I would always say hello to, but if you asked me his name, clearly I would have guessed Will. (laughs) (laughs) So, it happens. Hand number seven, Kumar with the jack six of hearts. It was half spades, half suited. Yeah. Queen nine Aldo in the hijack. Oof. Ooh, I kind of like that. Nancy's out of there. Tom in the button with the king four off suit. 86 for Mike. Got to be a little scared. I think at this point, Bobby's got, I mean, Bobby and Kumar have all the chips on the table. And a raise. Call and a raise. Obvs ob, with the ace, ten of suited, of diamonds, of suited. Good oh, lord. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get there. We're only 12 minutes in. So, I'm going to be on a podcast. Did I tell you this? No. Yeah, I'm going to be on a podcast with this guy. Um, um, so, he writes organized crime books for Milwaukee. <laughs> I know. It, maybe this isn't the best chance what? to be on there. But he's a huge poker player, and he wants to do – so, he's always, like, tweeting out about, like, you know, uh, just really cool stuff about – Poker in general, um, obviously how it pertains to organized crime in like the 30s and 40s in Milwaukee, but still pretty cool. I mean, he does it a much bigger. I don't know if it has anything to do with his book because he wrote a book about organized crime in Milwaukee. I don't know if they're correlating between the two or if it's just like a separate thing that he's doing as well. To, but he said it was partly to promote the book, so we'll see what happens. Huh. Who knows? I don't really know any cool gangster stories other no. than what I've seen on Mo- movies. movies. Yeah. I did work at a golf outing one time where uh, Joey the Clown Lombardo was there. Am I supposed to know who that is? Yeah. I don't know. He's like one of the most famous Chicago gangsters. Oh, really? Yeah, he tipped me 100 bucks. It's pretty cool. Sweet. Ten-year-old Kenny was pretty awesome. That's it. Yeah, My dad's too. like, get the hell away from that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, sir. Stop talking to Stop him. Stop talking to him. It's like, but the guy's so cool, he gave me 100. <laughs> All right, I see 25 outs here. I don't know how there was 25 outs possible. but Seven. I think it's because anything over a seven's a chop. Correct. And then a six he wins. Possibly. Or Jack. Well, that's over a seven. Ah, right. Right, and right, a f- right. And a four is a chop, too. Four is a chop. So really the only thing that aren't chops is two, three, and five. Six. No, six and makes a straight. Oh. 
So two, three, five. So I guess that's how there's 25 outs. I was looking at 25 outs. Holy cow! Sometimes I don't even know how many outs I have. Back at the max, Jim at the max. We're going to be there a, the first weekend of April, which I believe, if the schedule works out correctly, since we're on the CSOP and people are starting to ask me more about when the next CSOP is. So we do three CSOP events throughout the year. Bobby just made it 300000 on the button. With, with, with a Brian Urlacher suited? Yeah. Wow. It gets through. Shit. Problem is, is when it doesn't get through. you got to be able to give it up. Yeah, well, he's gonna have, he would have had to call John's all in. Right, because it would have been it, much more. Yeah, John only has, not only, but he's got 800000 Sometimes it's not bad to show that, right? I mean, it shows that you're a balanced player. I mean, you're yeah. going to get paid off then on your bigger hands. I mean, you got to think of it as an investment to future hands. And what did that uh, Maria Ho say? You, you accumulate chips so you can lose big pots later and still be in the tournament? Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. It's so simple and easy, but it's great. Anyways, back to the CSOP. We always do the CSOP main big CSOP three-month-long deal in the summer. And then we do the winter CSOP, which we kind of switched up this year to go from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Instead of it going like right now. Instead of like Halloween to Christmas. Oh. Halloween, that... to oh Halloween to Thanksgiving. It used to end on Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. This year we started it on Thanksgiving weekend, ended in at the last week of December yes. because that's when we did this event here yes, at the Mets. The last week of the year. So, with that being said, the mini CSOP, which is the third leg of the CSOP, or the first leg, however you want to look at it. All those shoves gets it through. Nice. King Jack versus King Seven. Yeah. Um... So the first weekend at the Max, we're going to have a four-day event, which will be the mini CSOP main, main event. event. So it's which end on the April? It'll end in April, so it'll probably be all of March into April as the final. So it'll be four weeks in March, you know, four weekends. There is one little hiccup in that uh, deal, so for those of you who like to listen to Thursday Night Poker, this is your chance to get uh, the inside scoop. If you don't read the scoop on the website... No? Brandon's shaking his head. No? I've, I've never read the scoop. Sorry. So, Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi, I just were, uh, texted them yesterday and confirmed that they will be at St. Andrews in West Chicago the last weekend of March. Okay. That's where we're doing the next mug meetup game with Brad and Andrew. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a special guest appearance from the J-Man, the Drawing Dead. Yep. Is, I love Jamin. that guy. He's the best. He's awesome. And uh, so, shout out to Jamin. Brad, do Brad and Andrew really need, like, shout-outs from us? Probably no, not. Probably Does not. Jamin really need nope. shout-outs from us? Probably nope. not. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, we have, like... Can you shout us out, guys? Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, I am going to shout-out to my new favorite Instagram, which is at Instamuck, at Insta underscore muck. The guy's putting out some pretty good content for a knit. It's a best-case <laughs> scenario for Instamuck, because it's basically Instamuck or nothing. Right. And he's been posting some CCG Poker TV stuff on there as well. So that's super cool. That is cool. I mean, I didn't even know that was a possibility. I'm going to have to figure out how he did that because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I've been re, like, re, um, not retweeting, but like reposting his Instagram stuff because, like, it's cool shit. Like, it's yeah. awesome that he's doing it. And it was funny. He even includes our commentary. It was great. Like, I, I was super impressed. So, anyways. Um, meetup game last weekend of March and then the final of the mini CSOP. Are we going to do another 360? Yeah. I think the mini and the winter are going to be 360 price range yep. and then the main main CSOP is going to be the 580 big one of the year drilling it, making it awesome. What else we got for promos? Let's do one more plug. Ooh, Aldo, A6 suited. He's got the Fletch suited. He no, does. but Bobby's, Bobby's three hundred thousand at twenty forty. Bobby's gone full pedal that? to the metals here. I don't even know. I can't even do that math. It's just too many, too many big blinds. He's full metaling it up here. He's got the pedal slammed against the floorboard, flying around. Oh, I, um, sorry, I'm all over the place today. It's I'm okay. on. I'm on Rockstar number three. No, you're not. No, I'm on Rockstar number two, and uh, and it's ten forty-five. Quinn woke up, like, super early last night, so I haven't been asleep since, like, 4 a.m. So, anyways, uh, a guy on Twitter had a really good um, analogy of what it's like when you go all in on a bluff. Uh -huh. Is 
when the guy looks you down, it's like flying past a cop going 20 miles over the speed limit, and you definitely know he saw you, and it's that sinking feeling that you're like, oh, like, shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, did right. he see me, did he see me, did he see me, oh no, oh no, oh no, and you're constantly checking the rear view mirror to see if the lights turn on and he comes after you. It's basically the equivalent yeah. of snap all in on a, a tournament one. life, and you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> I thought that was really good. That is a nice analogy. Nancy gets a walk with 10-8. Uh, she uh, did she have made, the best hand. She made it 100. Oh. Nancy raises. Folds through. Folds around. Nancy respect is what she gets. She was in the button there. She got the small and the big to fold. So Bobby is 7-Xing it, guys. And I will go to this. Nancy started short stack. And now she is third in third. chips. Yeah. I mean... Everybody's got a, a good amount of chips. I mean, nobody's in the panic realm, right? No. I mean, everybody's... 15 bigs is the shorty. But it is moderately lopsided with the uh, chip counts here, right? I mean, you've got a couple of big stacks and a couple of short stacks. About three and three. Yep. Right? Yeah. Three bigs, three smalls. Count but everybody's this. got plenty of chips. you got some, some chipping some, out where you don't have to go room. all in with yeah. tens here. You can kind of see a flop and yep. see how it goes. Ergo, Aldo... John raises to 90,000 with the Ace-9 suited. I'm calling that the Nancy from now on. Nancy. Mike, Ace-4, Queen-3 for Bobby. He out. Now I'm checking the pot, making sure it's right. Kid's trying. Yeah, he's, he looks good today. He's doing good. All right, 2040 is the, definitely the blind, so we must have incorrectly added them up the first time. Yeah, 600, 600, 600, so 865, 15, 15, and then basically 15, a million, a million and a half, 20. and 2.3. So Kamar actually is our chip leader. We can see now that stack of platforms. Yeah, he's got like 50, 50 something big blinds, which is massive. It's a lot of big blinds. That is a whole bunch of big blinds. Although, with the Nancy, Ace 9. Nancy off. Nancy off. Like yeah, don't yeah, don't play Nancy's hand against Nancy. That's just bad. Bad news bears. Time's out. Mike, little card dead right now. Bobby suited queen. Just limps in that time. Ooh. Probably a good thing he limped in, huh? Probably a good thing. See a nice. These two guys flop. really don't want to clash too hard against each other. Ew, no! Here you queen go. Queen three deuce though. Hunter K. Hey, Pot size bet. Call. Bobby oh. gives him a little min raise there. Not a fan of that. Problem is though, with the min raise, what are you gonna do on the turn now? Yep. You gonna check? You, you can't gonna, check. You gonna bet? Can't can't check. Okay, I guess you gotta bet then. Six. I mean, he's got a bet. Two hundred and seventy-five thousand. Don't check. Oh no, check check. Well, maybe slow him down. It did slow him down. A it bit. did. Five is a bad card because that nine is definitely gonna play as the kicker. Kind of unfortunate that it's all low low cards. Yeah. Check, check. Again. Yeah, checked all the way through. So I guess our analogy or our uh, analysis of Bobby's min raise there actually did get him a turn in river card for free. Yeah. I just can't imagine as Kumar, you're really going to get a guy to go check raise you on the flop, check you again on the turn. I guess you're def. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I do like that play. It worked. Yeah, Is he afraid he's going to get check raised again? I don't know. Pretty wild. Almost as wild as that hat. <laughs> so it is a hat. Mm -hmm. We're going with a hat. Oh, his shirt says Pilsen. That's kind of cool. I thought it was a Sox jersey. I don't know what's going on there. Well, it's a Sox logo. I'm aware that it's a Sox logo. Well, you said I thought it was a Sox t-shirt. Well, it's it not. is a Sox t-shirt. Mm. Mm. If Bobby sings a hat, not a visor, then that's a Sox t-shirt. Touche. <laughs> I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Does it say Pilsen? Yeah. All right, small big blind here. Pot's 100,000. Every hand, 100,000. I know. That's gross. So even though you're not in panic mode, I mean, picking up the blinds every round is important. Of course. I mean, yes. is that like a goofy thing to say? No, no, no. 
I mean, like, it's extremely important. That's how Nancy chipped up. She chipped up without showing her cards. Right. It's huge. Speaking of not showing your cards, Mike's got a mystery hand here. It's our rock star mystery hand of the day. Kamar folds the ace five, king four for John. He's going to slow fold here. I mean, 200,000, that's just a massive bet again. But taking it down. Again, is it a massive bet considering that there's 100,000 in the pot? I mean, that really just screams, don't call me, or I don't want to get re raised. Which one is it? I think it just screams like strength, like four times. Like, I don't know. What, Five what, X, right? What would you like to see people raise? 100,000. Yeah. yeah. That's two and, two and some change, two yeah. and a half. Um, yeah, it's two, two and a half. half. Like 110,000 and 200,000 are going to do the same thing. I was going through um, some of our old full full videos to try to get some more shorts, yep. CCG Poker TV shorts. And there was one where we were arguing over the pot size. And I was like, it's four tenths. And you're like, that's not even a number. I mean, obviously it's a number, but it wasn't right. And I was like, I don't know, what's the difference? What's between quarter pot and half pot? And like, we, uh, it was great. Three quarters? Yeah. I, mean, was I think we, ended up with, we landed on a third. It was great. Yeah, it was quarter pot half yeah, third. Like, well, technically, it's a little more than a third, but whatever. Nancy's got the mystery hand this time. Kumar limping the Tom button. has not had very many good hands yet. Kumar limps the ace-10. Love it. John completes Aldo. Checks. Maybe he's hoping to get Aldo to try to squeeze play here and... Screw it up. Maybe. Queen, seven, four, a couple hearts. Kumar goes from first to last. Yep. Yeah. All the flops of four, so does John, but all those got hearts. Kumar's going to bet that four, though. Nope, he's going to bet the ace ten. Check, check. 250 or 200? 200. Just bombs it. Yeah, four's out of there. This is, I mean, I guess he was a small blind, so I get it. But it's like, man, I hate when you play 5-4 and then you flop a 4. And it's like, why not then just fold the small blind, right? Yeah. He was probably just thinking 20 more thousand to get a good price. Yeah. Is all the going to go all in here? Yeah. All yeah. Those all in, which is it's a pretty standard play here. I mean, he's got a half a million. But she doesn't even think he has any fold equity, and somehow he does. Yeah. It's only 370 more to call. It's a big pot. I mean, Kumar can call anyways. Huh? Absolutely. I mean, he's got 2.3 million. He's got to call off 10%, 15% of his stack. He, he gives it up, though. It is a good fold. I mean, he's only got 1 in 10 to, to win here. I mean, he's got to drill a non heart ace or a 10. What's a space cowboy? Do you know? What's that a space song in the background? I don't I'm know. I'm a picker. I'm a sinner. I'm a midnight something. I don't know. How's that song go? Yeah. Is that? That's not space cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. He says something about. Oh, I'm a joker. I'm a toker. I'm a midnight smoker. Yeah. I play my music in the rain. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> this is, folks. This is why you shouldn't write songs while high. I know pot is legal now. It is, right? Is the buzz is. is the buzz gone? Because a lot I don't of those know. like I haven't. a lot of the penny stocks guys that I follow, like Wolf of Wall Street kind of guys that are like the Wolf of Penny Stocks is yeah. what this guy does. He's just he's got a cool logo, so I follow him on Twitter. And um, Tom picking up a, a he was just blasting out cannabis, cannabis stocks, cannabis stocks, and I, I wonder if there's been a little dip now that it's been kind of a couple of weeks, probably two weeks. Yeah. I don't know. I've driven past twice, and both times there was lines around the place. Jesus. So I. All right, Tom raises finally gets a hand with an ace deuce. He's just got to get some big blindage coming out of here. So, John mucked the ace eight. He does get through. Nancy yeah. was seven three in the big one. See, hundred thousand is going to be do the same job as two hundred. And he can fold and still be okay. Yep. And then he's down to ten big blinds, and he's good to go. Yep. He chips up over Mike here just a little bit. 700K is our short stack, but you got a 7, 725, 745. And Nancy's, you know, paying a couple rounds of blinds, one round of blinds, and really it's just Kumar and everybody else. I mean, Bobby a Bobby's bit got a too, million and change. But still.
All right, looks like blinds went up. We're at 25.50 now. 50 big blind Annie. When does the big blind Annie get half? Five. Five players. So half of a table, half ante. Yes. That makes sense. I think six was too good. Easy to remember. Yeah, it is easy half to remember. Half. Kumar ace nine. He's going to limp again. He didn't learn his lesson from limping the ace last time. As my dear friend Daniel Negreanu says in his master class, if it's good enough to call, it's good enough to raise. Yeah. Fives for Nancy. Think she gets involved here? Probably not. Too late into the tournament to go set mining. Especially for a hundred. Everybody's 000. big line. Yeah, everybody just doesn't have enough. I mean, it's almost twenty percent of her stack, right? I guess it is because she had. Oh no, she had like eight and change, so close to uh, one fifth of your stack. Yeah. My math's getting better here. King ten versus ace nine. I like the ace nine here. They're gonna flop an ace. Boom. Yep, drills an ace. So who's that? Kumar got check. Yeah, Kumar's Kumar, got a come on, dog check. He's just gonna lead right into him. This is gonna get John a chance to just fold. Yeah. Where Kumar limped. Yeah, I mean, if you're limping, limped and then called, if so. you're limping with an ace and you flop an ace, let the guy bet into you and yeah. try to get a little bit more value. If he checks behind you, then you know you bet the turn, and it's the same. It's the same. Correct. It's the same as betting the flop. You're probably just going to get him to fold. And really, what are you worried about on the turn there? Nothing. I mean, there's a flush draw, but. And again, you got two million in chips, and John's got six hundred thousand. Yep. So even if he snapped. You know, if you bet and he goes all in, whatever, you call it anyways. Yep. Like, get it in there. Yep. It's not like he can dent your stack to where you No. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to do that too many times, but. Sure, no. You build a big stack so you can lose big pots late in the tournament and still be in. That's right. Ergo, Murray a hoe. She gets a lot of love on this show. She does. I like that saying. I, she's, all, I mean,. To me, for her to say, She's a better if, if you go from is, um, if you go from fifth to fourth, it's like, it's like final tabling the main event again. the next year. Yeah. Like that's insane. I was like, yeah. mind exploded. So I'm a full blown Maria Hull fan. Me too. Let's see what other names we can drop. This is like the name drop and final table for me. Um. I mean, I, I talked about Joey Ingram's saying that the MLB invest, uh, investigatory team should be doing the postal scam. We talked about Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, Jamin Burton. Johnny Vibes also was there that weekend, so just throwing another another guy, yeah, another name in the hat. His vlog actually should be coming out Oh, he's soon. talking about Dan Grande's master class. Dan Grande's master class. Uh, what else? What else? Who else? Oh, Maria Ho. Um, yep. Obs. Obs. Yep. Aldo with the ace nine again. Kumar's just... Aldo is, is an old school CCG player yep, that I most remember. people don't know that he has oh, been I around him when I was since yeah. like legit. 2007. I mean, the beginning. He's been around a long time. He plays really well in tournaments. I don't know if he's a cash game guy. I don't know no, if he plays a lot of cash not games. Not really, not too much. I don't see him in cash games very often. Pretty good flop from Mike here. I think he just went all in. Yep. Half a million. Got a gut shot and the second nut flush. Draw. Gonna get it through. That's how you play your draws. There you go. Jam it in there. So six, six oh five, seven fifty five, nine, ten, nine forty five, one point one, all the way up to two point five. So John and Tom now with the blinds going up and them not picking up any blinds, twelve bigs, still okay. Getting close yeah. to that danger zone. Highway to you don't remember that song? To the danger zone? No. Top Gun. Are you excited for Top Gun Part Two to come out? Not really. I am. You don't know what you're talking about then. <laughs> I think we should do a podcast from the theater. Sure. Are you allowed to do that? I don't know. I mean, we can do it. I'll be there. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, what's the worst thing that can happen? It's right there. The box. i got to bust oh, it open nice. and figure it out. The nice thing is that we could actually do it in an event because it's totally portable. Yeah. So we could almost do some, some guest, guest spots in CCG. We could just do a podcast while we're playing Spades. Go ahead. Come on, Keith. You can be on the on the commentary. What's going on? 
Oh, nice. They have a working door. Door's good. Door's been broken for how long? A month? Two. Maybe two? It was a standoff between management and the management company of the office here. Who won? The, the management company from the office <laughs> complex. Because they don't use the door we do. Yeah, they don't use the door we do. So, so they don't really care if the door's broken. Nope. <laughs> Tom goes all in here with uh, ace-king suited. All those got king-queen suited. Uh, I got to imagine he's going to give it up here. He is. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be the second guy to get it all in there. Nope. Um, and Tom hasn't played any hands. Keith, would you like to make any? Oh, uh, just since we're name dropping like crazy, um, no, nah, I don't want to get Keith in trouble. I won't name drop his celebrity. So it's a it's a phantom name drop. It's pretty awesome. It is on Instagram. Oh, it, it is on his Instagram. Oh, nice. I'm not I'm not gonna say what it is. I will say this: he is the uh, perpetrator of the 2020 tip at IHOP in St. Charles, Illinois. He was also in New Kids on the Block. And he's married to a local Chicago celebrity, Jenny McCarthy. Who is it? You know who it is? You asking me? Yeah. Um, who else would I be asking? There's literally only two people in the I room. thought you were talking about Keith. Well, I, mean, Keith I wasn't even listening. Uh, it's, it's Wahlberg. Yeah, Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie Wahlberg. Can you actually see if you can uh, segue your your influence here on this game to possibly uh, get a Wahlbergers opened up in Chicago? There's one in already. Oh, there is? There is? Boom! All right, well, that yeah, worked. St. Charles in May. Nice. Oh, wow. Why not nice. St. Charles in May? Nice, nice, nice. Wahlburgers is good. I've never had it. It's good. I, I, I've i been to the one in Vegas. I think so that's it. It's like Steak Shack in Vegas. Yeah, Steak Shack's good. I've only had Steak Shack good. once. I've had Steak Shack. Which is out in the shop there as well. Really? Isn't there a Steak, Steak Shack opening up in Oak Brook, too? I think there's one in Oak Brook. We've really skewed off yeah. of poker well, here. Well, to be fair, there, yeah, we got Mo. We can hey, Mo. Mo. Mo the floor guy. Mo the escort to the cage. Can't imagine that guy would ever do well as an escort. No. no. Tom continues his string of just crap cards. Well, yeah, this king, he just got his king on. I know, but I mean, that's like one. He's he's made two bets in 37 minutes. I guess that's pretty good. It is yeah. easy poker. All you, in. You, know, you pick up a hand, you're all in. Pretty solid. Uh, Aldo gets a walk here with 10-5 suited. Needs it. John's getting low. John's little, uh, getting low. He's under 10 big blinds because we're at 25 50. So he's at 9 big blinds. Which is really kind of skewed because when it's your big blind, you have to pay 2 big blinds. So with the ante, you're really less than 9 big blinds. Is that how that works? No. It's big pots. It's big pots that matters. Yeah. What do you say? Oh, I'm Keith. I just show <laughs> up and talk about this, that, and whatever. Do we have to give him, like, royalty points on this? Sure, we'll give him 33%. It's funny. Tom from the VFW Warrenville was like, oh, I heard you mention me that I cooked the hamburgers at, at, at Warrenville at the, yeah. in the kitchen. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, you do have to give me uh, any royalty checks that you get. I was like, Tom, you can have all the money we right. make from these YouTube videos, right. which is a big fat zero. It's probably it's negative. Totally yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to have to pay. I'm gonna, ooh, Bobby with aces. See well, you. hey, th nice to have you on the show, Keith. So here's the it. problem. If Bobby's going to raise the 300000 with 5-4 clubs and Queen-10 offsuit, he should probably be doing it with aces, too. And he just limped? And he limped. 7-8-9. Aldo flop. a 7. Nancy a gut shot. One diamond out there for all those backdoor draw. 75K into the pot. I mean, it's going to end up being okay probably for Bobby, but this in general you really is risk. a bad flop. Yeah, I mean... You don't want to see seven eight nine. That is no. such a wet flop. Yeah. Well, there's no flush draw, but it's still wet, especially with um, the blind. Does it have to be? Oh, that's an even worse turn card. Check. That might be the worst ten, uh, turn card you could have hoped for. Yep. So Gives Bobby's backdoor check. clubs absolutely. So now, although just has to know Bobby does not have a straight and should just bluff this river. And Bobby cannot call. Probably not. You got to bluff though. You're definitely not good with the seven here. And he just gives it up. Bobby, check, check. Bobby Gonna show the aces. Over aces. Shout out to Geo, just wandering. meandering about. So the idea of 
if you're gonna raise big with your bad hands and you don't raise big with your good hands, the problem is he shows down aces there and he showed that he limped in. So then every player should be thinking, what the hell was he making at 200,000 with when he had 300,000, when the blinds were 20, 40, what the hell did he have? Sevens, eights, I mean, you don't put them on a big pair. No. So I don't know, I mean, I guess it's information, as long as you use that information to your advantage, other players and Bobby as well. I mean, if he limps in again, or you know what I mean? Like, you just, I guess, I don't mind the unbalanced play if there is some kind of uh, consistency to it. Doesn't that make it balanced, though? Uh, in a weird way, yeah. I guess it does. <laughs> I just meant, like, you always say you that if you're going to raise 300000 with 5-4, you should be raising 300000 with your aces so that people don't know what you have. Yeah. I mean... I, I guess it's more of your range. I guess it's better the way he's doing it than the other way, where he's only raising three hundred hundred k with, with the big aces. ones, and then he showed a five four there, right? Yes. I guess I don't. So it, you know, it's, it's like reverse. It's like a silver medal. Yeah. Ace jack for John. He's all in, non suited. Kumar called. Tom's got sevens here, but and he does have him covered. Although it will cripple Tom if yes. he he'll be down to. Six big blinds. This sucks because it's like a call, and he probably doesn't want to call, but he knows you probably kind of has call. to call. And you're really hoping to call for your best case scenario he's to be racing, a flip, yeah. and this is exactly where he's at. And so he calls. Like, I, I mean, he I goes all he, in. Yeah, it, it sucks because he knows he has to, but he doesn't yep. want to. Yep, 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 and yep. So here we go. We're racing. And he's the big blind, so he's already got chips in the pot. I think if he was under the gun, we might have seen a fold there because he would have raised, gotten an all-in, and then gotten rid of it. Yep. All right. Well, Tom's down to, uh, or John's life uh, tournament life is on the line here. Gonna need some face cards. Coin flip coming at you. Come on now and give us the flop. I see paint. Paint, but the wrong color. Two diamonds out there. Going to need some help. Oof. Big bad ace on the turn. That's some help. Nine as well. So he's got two pair of aces and nines. Tournament poker, guys. Got to win goes. the races. I mean, in all honesty, when you race for anything, do you ever not want to win the race? No, you always want to win the race. I'm right. saying you got to win it. Ah. You can't win tournaments without winning races. Cannot win a tournament without winning races. I mean, Greg Raymer won something like 21 of 22 races on the way to winning his bracelet. Who did? Um, Moneymaker? Raymer. Oh, Raymer. 21 of 22 races. I will say, considering... I mean, when did Raymer win the main event? 2003. So it went... Maybe he won an 03? No. He won after Moneymaker or yep, before? The year after Moneymaker. Well, Moneymaker won in like 06. No. Oh. Moneymaker won in 02. No. That can't be right. Dog. Dog me. Let me see. Moneymaker won in 02 or 03. I'll put any Which, amount of money. Any amount of money you want in the world. No. 2000. Jamie Gold, 2004. Yeah. I'm going 2002. Chris, I'm going 2003. Chris Moneymaker 2003. won the... 2003. Damn it. 2003. It was 2003. Raymer, 2004. Hashem, 2005. Greg Jamie Raymer Gold, won in 04. Who's uh -huh. after 04? Hashem, 2005. Hashem, 05. Jamie Gold, 2006. Let's just keep going. That's all Jamie Gold. Um, There's a guy who just went busto, huh? Yeah, the next one is that uh, Asian guy. Um, 06. No? Peter Eastgate? Peter Eastgate. Okay. Okay. 1 and 08. It's an Asian guy. He became that. the youngest player ever to win the event. Eastgate? He was like 22. Well, and then he subsequently got surpassed the very next year by who won it next? Joe Cotta. Oh, yeah, Joe Cotta. <laughs> Main event winner. Can I, 32 years old is the youngest. That's pretty crazy to think can, about. Can I tell a quick story? Um, last time, me and your sister and Ryan were in Vegas. Uh, we were waiting for an Uber. 
and Joe Cotto was in front of us in like the Uber line at the Aria. Uh-huh. And um, um, he was like, he was like wearing a backpack and just like backwards hat and like definitely looked like a professional poker player. And me and Ryan are just like, ooh, ooh it's Joe Cotta, it's Joe Cotta. And like we didn't say anything. But, right, yeah, but you know, he got obviously the, you recognized. Yeah, him. I was like, we got in the car and went away, and then uh, like Allison said something like. Man, I bet that guy thinks he's good at poker or something like that. Like <laughs> he's like he's got the real professional poker look. I was like, well, he is a main event champion, and like Eddie's got like three bracelets and yeah. like seven million. I was like, he's one of the guys. Hey, didn't, who he, could, didn't he final who, table another one? Like so he final tabled it like in 2016 or 17. Okay, and then final tabled it, busted, entered oh, I, a I guess new. You can go to tended mom. Entered a new tournament that day and won the bracelet of that tournament. Well, he's... This is kind of crazy. He's a main event winner. He won the main event. Best live catch. Eight and a half million dollars. So he's got, okay. what, 15 million? All-time money list. 48th in the world. Yeah, well, there's some of these high rollers now. 27th in the United States. Yep. Still pretty crazy. But he's second in his home state of Michigan. Who would be the number one player in Michigan who has won the most amount of money over Joe Cotta, which has got to be somebody we absolutely know. But I cannot, for the life of me, Ryan, know who it is. Ryan Reese. Yes, that's true. Cool. Damn it. That's just lucky because he won the main event, too, for like $10 million, and then he's got other cashes, too. But Ryan Reese was a uh, charity poker dealer. Oh, in Michigan? Oh. Uh-huh. Nice. Do, uh, do they still have a lot of a lot of those? Yeah, they still have a lot of them. Yeah, Ryan Reese, it, he's got him squeaked out by like seven hundred thousand. Which, considering those guys both have about fifteen million dollars in yeah. money, that's pretty crazy. Reese the Beast, that's two thousand eleven. You know, I only or know. Uh, and actually, I heard him on that um, the Barstool Sports podcast, uh-huh. Cracking Aces, which is pretty good. We actually got a shout out from them on Twitter, not from them. Uh, Wiffleball Derek. Hit, hit him back up. He's like, oh, I love the show. By the way, you've got it wrong about charity poker in Chicago. Like, they actually play for real money prizes. It's not just, like, your standard charity event. La, 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 la. Nice. And, um, but, yeah, anyways, I heard Ryan Reese when he was on the uh, What year did he win? 2011 or 2012? Or 2010? I don't think it's got a ton of cash as I'm really scrolling down here. 19 was a huge year for him. Okay, well, you got to go way back because it was 2010 or 11. Or maybe just look it up. 16th at the Hard Rock Poker Open in Hollywood. 49th in the World Series of Poker main event. Or 42nd. I don't know, anyways, big one. Cash in the one drop, the little one drop. Kumar limps the small blind. Guy cashes John a lot. Checks. Jeez. Well, yeah, now that he won the main event, he's full blown. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right, well, what's going on in our main event tournament? He won 2013. King takes it down. If you won the main event tournament, uh-huh. would you play poker professionally forever then? Probably not. I just feel like once you, I, I don't know, I mean, I'd still play, but I don't know, I feel like I would just. I mean, I feel like I've always just, like, played those big tournaments to, like, bink one and then. And then not play anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, not play anymore. Like, that's the dream? Like, well, yeah, a lot of people, it's the dream. Invest like, bink, your money, do a something A lot of cool. one, it's, like, bink one and then play forever. Like, I'm just, like, the opposite. I'd like to bink it and just keep it. Yeah. Spend it. Right. All of it. Hang out. Do cool stuff in Dubai. Right. Like. <laughs> mm, Bobby with the ace. Deuce. Suited. Up against Nancy, though. He's going to see a flop. Kamar's down. John's not playing. Aldo, 50K to see uh, a flop with 10-8. Ah, a little tight, Aldo. I would have yeah. liked to see a flop there. Three-way action. You fought something really big there. We just got a hundred thousand in already. I mean, it's his money, not ours. Big whiff on that one. Nancy just drills three kings. That's a dream flop. See, Nancy's got it right. She checks. He checks. 
I bet she's gonna check the turn again. Turn turn a spade. Oh, it was so close to a spade. Now do you bet into him? Yeah. I could see a check again. You really gotta think what you're gonna get two streets of value from. Did she get raised? Yeah, yeah min raised. That's awesome. Again. She's gotta love that. Now, again, so gonna snap call something we off. talked about. When you take chips out of the pot, what are your two options? Raise or call. Raise or call. You cannot fold at that point. So, folks, if you take chips out of the pot, don't make your own change until you muck your cards. Because if you try to, like, you know, if you said 75 and you put out a big 100K chip and then you try to throw in three, you know, you're you're calling that next bet. So, Nancy so checks. muck and then make your own change if yes. that's what you want to do. Or, in all actuality, Don't why the hell are you making a bet of 75000 and throwing in one big chip? Seems a little angly to me. You deserve what you get. Just yeah. throwing those three brown Boom. chips. So, Nancy checked the river and... Um, Bobby did Bobby not fire again. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think Bobby was really going for like the min raises to get checks out of people later. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like to do that sometimes in PLO, like raise on the flop, knowing that they're going to check the turn, and then I get to just check it back and see a river. So you raise the flop and then get to see the turn on the river for the price of your raise on the flop. Yeah, it's my standard move in Vegas. I always do it at any table I play at. Uh, and I'm a dream player for poker floors because I'm like, oh, what games are running? And they're like, oh, bop, 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 bop. I was like, cool, put me on every list, and I'll take the max buy-in on all of them. <laughs> Right. Like, just stick me anywhere. Put me in anywhere, coach. I will literally play anywhere. 1-1, yep. one, one, I'm not going to bitch. 1-2, not going to bitch. 1-3, not going to bitch. 2-5, not going to bitch. 5-10, yep. going to be a little nervous, but I'll play. <laughs> right. It's Vegas. I'm, I'm here to have some fun. And, uh, but yeah, that's always a good. So Kumar's just chilling up there at the top. Nancy, John with that big double up. So Bobby's bleeding a little bit now. And Tom is on life support. He's in the big blind for a third of his chips. So we should see, like... Oh, so my standard Vegas poker so many poker balls. angle that I always do is that right when I get into a big pot early and I flop a flush draw, and I check, and a guy bets into me, and I always go, I see your 100, and I raise 300. And the dealer's like, whoa, 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 sir, you can't do that. You have you already said call. You, you can't. Like, wait, what do you mean? I was like, but in my home game, we always do this. And he's like, no, you, you can't say call. And I was like, fine, fine, fine. And then uh, I always get a check out of the guy on the turn. So I'm like, I basically guaranteed myself to get two, two free looks, cards. Two yes. looks at the flush draw. It's so bad. I've only done that once, and it was really funny. All right, Tom, force. Force is kind of uh, dreamy. When you're down to five big blinds, so look yeah. down to force. And he might get it through here. I mean, he would love for it to get through. Yeah. He picks up his 50k now, rebate back. Did somebody back. ask to, to how much? Um, I mean, I think Kumar did. I don't know what you mean by I see your 100, I raise 300 euros like Wall Street can't do that. You have your UE set call you. You can always do this. And he's like, no, you can't say Cossack 555. And then I always get a check, basically. What is it? Guarantee myself to get to retard. Yeah, it's so bad. I've only done that once. And it was really funny how time force. Holy shit, Suri. I'm good. Wow. Don't text that to anybody. <laughs> wow. Suri just recapped my whole story there. Pretty good. Yeah, it really wasn't too bad. Wow. It makes me nervous that they record everything. Good thing we're recording the recording. Whoa. Does uh, that cancel out? John calls with ace seven here and Man, just bangs an ace. He's going to win both so flips Tom against wins Tom. Two fl loses two flips. Yeah. It's a tough way to lose a tournament. Again... That's what happens, right? I mean, you got to win flips to to keep going in a tournament. And and I, in all honesty, can you ever say that you've won in a tournament or cashed really well in a tournament where at least one time, just one time, give me one time, that you got it in bad and got lucky and won like a 70-30 where you were the 30 and up against the 70. Like moderately put out a bad beat. Like that has to happen as well, right? Right. So, I mean, it, you know, the thing is, I always, when people, like, want to tell you bad beat stories and stuff, I'm always yeah. like, yeah, but just think about it. Like, you probably did that to somebody else and kept yourself in the tournament. So, it's like, you kind of have to take the good. Yeah. And it's like. I don't want to say poker karma, but, like, a little bit, right? I mean. And even bad beats. Like, if you're playing a tournament like, you know, this main event or, like, the actual main event, like, you can't win all the 80-20s. Like, you can't get in an aces versus You nine. lose one out of five times. 
You can't. And they, you're like, oh man, I can just go through a tournament and win aces versus nines twelve times. It's like it's just it's it probably doesn't, doesn't happen. Right. It's just yeah. hard. In fact, you aces versus right. nines twelve times. You're really gonna lose two and a fifth times. Yeah. Two and a fifth. Yeah. Two and a. Right. Well, ten times you would win two out of ten. Right. Statistically, yeah. you could win more. All right, Mike. Like Postel says, he just won 300 coin flips in a row, and that's how he won all that money. So look at Mike. Mike is, this is kind of crazy time. I think Mike's picked up that Kumar is limping with a lot of poop. Nice. Good. And, and Bobby is uh, on the same. same. Well, Bobby was big blind, but Bobby's playing pretty tight for all of his chips. And uh, Mike's just said, you know what, I'm all in. I'm going to take down this. And he took it down. Yeah, I love it. A little uncharacteristic, it. but I mean, you know, you could build up an image for those plays to work once. Switching in up hour. the right, switching it up. Right, I like it. And if he did that once every thirty minutes, and in addition to does Pl that when he has his good hands, right? Like they're never. Would you say that's a balanced player? Probably pretty balanced. Yeah, pretty balanced. Pretty balanced. You ever notice on your hands when you get like cuts that you have no idea How where they're them? from? Yeah, I do. Crazy. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do one more plug since we only got about 10 more minutes here of part one. It's only going to be a two part series for the CSOP winter CSOP main event. Um, basically, we've only lost one player in the first hour, so this has got to be a shotgun finish here with just pew, 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 yeah. people going crazy. But I want to do a couple of uh, things. I want to do a free roll, and I want to do a social media free roll. What do you think about it? Uh, Meaning, you get zero chips if you are not following CCG on any of our social media platforms. If you follow us on Facebook, you get 1,000 in chips. If you follow us on Instagram, you get another 1,000 in chips. If you're following us on Twitter, you'd get 3,000 in chips. If you follow us on YouTube or subscribe to us on YouTube, you get 4K in chips. Something along those lines where yeah, I like it. you could get up to 5K in chips if you follow us on all of our platforms. Bing, bang, boom. Sign up for the email list. Because I want to do a new Share VIP a video email list. Or you know, we could we could do you something could fun like, like that, right? If you did everything, you get everything. That's and then I'll put up the prize pool money. You know, I'm thinking like, how much? I always go crazy. Yeah, I mean, What's I a know. good number? Let's 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 pick a, a weekend right now. Thousand? I was gonna say fifteen hundred. Maybe a thousand in cash and five hundred seats. Or two K all day. Thousand, thousand. That might be fun. I'm gonna say two thousand. Two thousand dollars. So we just you just dealt with me somehow. You, you did go crazy. I did go crazy. Yeah. So you basically raised yourself. I said a thousand. You said right. fifteen hundred. I see my own raise and I raised myself. Right. It's like when it's, a, it, it's like you went all in and it didn't reopen the betting, but yet I still I still raised and you're like, no, sir, you're you're not allowed to do that. It's like in the, it doesn't open up the action. The in, action's closed. In the Calcutta's when I'm like, oh, I've been ninety five dollars for Tiger Woods, and then it's like going once. I'm like, no, ninety seven, ninety seven, ninety eight. <laughs> or I yell a hundred. You're like. Bro, we're partners on this. Like, why are you raising? <laughs> so anyways, I want to do this. So if you do not follow us now, please do so. Well, don't um, do it yet. Oh, yeah, don't do it. No, do it now because I'll be able to look and see. Um, we're going to have to find a way to make sure it happens. I mean, they're going to have to confirm Yeah. or something like that. Like they're gonna have, For every thousand chips, you're going to have to like bring in. A, show me and yeah, like figure Screenshot it, out. it on your phone. Right. Psh, subscribe. We'll, we'll figure something Psh. out. But basically what I want to do is right now we're like hovering at 700 followers on Instagram. I want to get that over 1K, no problem. I want to get us over 1K on YouTube. I want to get us to 2,000 on Twitter. And uh, we're at 7,500 right now in Facebook. I'd love to get to 8K. So that's my goal. And I want to get some people signed up for our new email letter, kind of a VIP deal where we're sending out some, some different stuff than just... Just spewing here's out what's going the on events. This week. Yeah, I want to do like more Speaking of of that, informational. Now that we're an hour in, Kings Hall all three days. Huh? Kings Hall all three days and um, bounties all, all three bounties days. all three days. One twenty, one fifty. Ooh, a little one fifty bounty on Friday. Dude, Eddie's the best. Some guy, Mark, who's a top fan, goes, "I have a great idea to give away uh, to give away a seat to one player for all three tournaments." Thumbs up. I was like, "Cool, lay it on me." Eddie, Eddie responds back from Caddyshack, well, we're waiting. <laughs> like, the guy's just, he's hes, I know. he's killing it. He's social media killing it right now. He should get 15,000 chips. 
Yeah, right now, Eddie, you're right. getting a bonus Eddie's 20%. A chip like, if you just start commenting, here, there you go. You can get up to 15,000 in chips if you're sharing, liking, yeah. and commenting. Like, let's make uh, a little viral. I'm going to make it our own viral so that we can really make some stuff happen. So start practicing on social media. And if you guys are like, oh, I'm old, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, that's malarkey. Get your grandkids, get your kids, get your neighbor, come to CCG, and Brandon and I will sign you up for Twitter. It's awesome. Twitter's awesome. Dude, Twitter's Whoever's the best. Whoever's not on Twitter. You're missing out. Right. I wish I had a college professor tell me Twitter was going to be huge in like the industry in like 2008, 2009. I wish I would just put money in the stock. Gary Vee owns part of Twitter, yeah, and it's awesome. I know. And I love when he shows his old tweets where he got, like, two likes, one share. And now the dude puts out something like, oh, hashtag coffee with Gary Vee and I'll fly to New York City. And his stuff trends on Twitter. Yep. Like, one of the top three things talked about on Twitter is when he just shouts out, this is what we're doing. Which I think is awesome. It's incredibly awesome. Anyways, back to the show. He also said to invest in Amazon when it was $160 a share. I also like the fact that Gary Vee got two opportunities to be a huge investor into Uber and passed twice. twice. That's why I like his speeches. That's why I like talking about him because he not only only shows his good stuff, like, yeah, I got it on Twitter. Yeah, I've really pushed his social media, and it's a huge platform now. Oh, by the way, I also had a huge screw-up because I could have got in on Uber twice been a bajillionaire and it was like his good friend too yeah so it's if there's ever a time to get in right all Anyways. right so nancy is uh defending the the, the 10 four off which might be a little bit too loose but i think she thinks she can outplay kumar this is just a bad flop for her and kumar is going to see bet and take it down What am I looking for? Oh, we do have a new CCG Poker TV short coming out this week. Nice. 99 Ways to Play Jacks. Or 99 Problems and Jacks Ain't One. Nice. It's obviously Will in the 2-5 cash game who's just a poor kid, gets great cards, and just gets Can't just win. in just Can't such win. tough spots. I don't know if he wins or loses because sometimes he wins and sometimes he loses. Um, but just he gets put in really tough spots. What were we just talking about? Oh, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter's the best. Twitter. Bobby folds the Jack Deuce. Kumar back to the King Four. John folds before we can even see his cards. Aldo, King Four on the button. If there's ever a chance to raise it up here, I don't know if it's against Nancy and... Oh, he went all in. Nancy folds queen five suited, and Mike folds before we can even see him. 10-3 suited. Nope, 10-3 off. So, nice move, Aldo. Actually, Twitter's not doing that great on the market right now. What, like Twitter stock? Yeah. I don't mean by Twitter stock. I just meant like... I know, I did. I didn't realize I didn't even have a IPO until that late in the game here. All right, well, we're rounding down here to the last couple of hands. A lot of weak aces. A lot of, like, weird yeah. ace eights, ace nines. And, again, it's like it's a – and it's in bad position, yeah. right? Like it's, it's not even really – yeah, it's never, like, on the button, ace eight. is huge. Right. 85 bears for all, though. He's out. Mike peeking at his cards. We can't see him yet. He likes him. I think he likes him. Hey, Mikey. I think he likes him. Hey, Mikey. He likes it. All right. King 10 for Bobby, who is going to raise back at Mike. Just the battle of the blinds here. Everyone else folded. We don't know what Mike has. He's got 825. He's really eyeballing Bobby here. Like, hardcore eyeballing him. Kid, I don't think he got anything. That's what he's thinking right now. Let me. He's just trying to get his, his poker Jedi-ness. Oh, now he's covering the artery. He's thinking about it. I think he went all in. Because why would Bobby be looking at his cards? And shake. Wow. Mike is a stone-faced killer. He is. Just soul reads, so Bobby. So this is why Bobby doesn't need to raise to 260, because 
You can just raise less and then lose less. Mike just takes down in. an extra 320. Boom. And Mike always has these mystery hands. You think he's not putting them on the card, or we have a, a screwed up card? No, we switched out the deck, so it should be fine, but you never know. <laughs> so when I was using Amazon as a bookstore only for college books, wow. you say enough's enough, huh? it was about 66 bucks a share. And now? 18, 1860. That's not bad. No. That's not bad. Nothing wrong with that, folks. So $1,000 would have got you 15 shares and would now be worth 29 k It's not bad. For 1000 It's a Honda Civic. Nancy <laughs> with Ace Jack. Get it through. We haven't seen any really big battles so far. No. Well, I mean, two the, hands two, really two haven't flips. clashed, really. But it's been moderately pretty... Uh... So Bobby's down to six bigs. It sucks for him. He hasn't really got to shown down anything. No. He... But is that his fault or somebody else's? No, it's not really his fault. It just sucks. Unfortunate? Yeah. I mean, he got the raised, queen eight versus gotten... queen nine. Flopped a queen. Lost. Somehow lost the minimum by check raising the flop. Flop was ace, king, king. He had ace, deuce, ran into Nancy's king, jack. Oh, yeah. Nothing you can do about that one either. Kind of yeah. lost almost the minimum there, too. Although, king, queen. King, queen, and weak aces have been. And Aldo is going to shove all in here for 500k. So it's 30k, 60k now. So everybody's big blinds just sh shrunk. Everybody's stack size just got a little smaller. Yeah. So all those around to Kumar with the King Ten suited. It's going to be tough to get rid of this one because he's only got another 470 to call. It's not going to be a ton of chips for him. You like the call here? I don't know. I think I might like a fold. Just because it's all though. What's he really beating? Not really beating anything. King Ten's a nice hand to play. Sevens, eights, nines yeah. is his best hope. Right. And Aldo gets it through. Takes down the blinds and Annie's, which is massive at this point. 60, 60, and 30 is 150K. He only had 500K. You know, if you can get a shove through three times, you can double up from 500K down there. So it takes. That's it. That's it. Three shoves, get it through. Easy game. Easy game. All right, moving on. Now, we don't have the exact payouts, guys, but the pay jumps are getting hefty at this point. Nancy with Ace King suited. She's going to lead out under the gun. Another big hand in the under the gun spot. Mike probably would have gotten squirrely there with that Queen Jack suited, but yeah. didn't get the opportunity to do so. John, same thing. Oh, no, he's up to a million and a half in chips. Oh, yeah. he took all of Tom's chips. Yep. Literally all of Tom's yep. chips. All and of folds. And that's it. Nancy gets a walk. Yeah. What did she raise to? 150? 140. And the blinds are 30, 60? Yeah, so just over. It's perfect. 2.33. It's perfect. So uh, I was reading something about how, like, under the gun is, like, the new button. Okay, you're gonna have to elaborate on that because that seems <laughs> like you know you can you can steal from under the gun because people give you so much credit because they the, the perceived range is much smaller, right? Or like you so know, so they're kind of using the broken aspect of the game where you can put people on a range in certain spots to their advantage by shoving pick. She didn't do that. She had she eight actually had a hand, yeah. but like say she, you know like say she had whatever four or five. Mm -hmm. She got. Mike to fold, king, queen jack queen suited. Jack suited. She got the big blind not to defend the king four. She, you know, I mean, obviously nobody really had much for her to defend, but it's kind of a weird. Everybody knows you're stealing when you're on the button. All right, we got an all in here by Aldo and a call by Nancy. I think this is the last hand of part one of the winter CSOP main event championship. So this is small blind, big blind. I mean, this is kind of unfortunate for Nancy. It is. She's I mean, got a call with Ace. Yep. She can't fold an ace there. She's got a million chips, which is basically half of her chips, though. Right? It is, but, I mean... A little less than half, I mean. But it's only, what, eight big blinds. You gotta look at it in big blinds. It's, I mean, 
How can he fold? And she already knows she's she's pretty dominated here. Yeah, all the flip over his cards. Yeah. Well, unfortunate for Nancy to get uh, a spot there. I will say pro move by Nancy. You notice how she uses big chips? Yep. She's not calling with the pink chips, which is what everybody wants to do because you don't really want to give up your big chips. But in reality, this makes the play go faster. Uh -huh. It means you get more hands at more levels, which means you get to play a deeper structured tournament. If everybody did that, the game would be a greater place. Three, four, seven, couple diamonds. Nancy, Nancy has does have a diamond. And backdoor straight. How about a five of diamonds right now? Mm, six is still good. She's got a gut shot. She five ball. Five, five, five and eight. eight. Ten. Oh, six of diamonds. She gets there with the diamonds. Unfortunate that uh, she she picked up an ace there with uh, all those massive ace queen and the small blind, big blind battle of the blinds. Although with a huge, huge, huge double up. Yeah. He's up to 1.1 1. .1 million, which is going to put him like third in chips. So that's huge. Um, all right, well, that's going to do it for part one of the Winter CSOP Main Event Championship. Make sure to tune in next week, Thursday Night Poker, 7 p.m. on both Facebook and YouTube, which you should now be following and subscribing since we dropped that we're going to do the $2,000 social media free roll. All you have to do is follow. Follow. Click, share. And it's free. It's not like this stuff costs anything. Nope. It's all fun and free. I don't even mind if you want to make fun of us. Right. Just comment, so share, and like. Really quick. Look at this one the showdown graphic, Mike. Oh, they probably can't see it. Zero percent. No, this will this will stay on. Zero percent has not shown down a single hand, which is awesome. He's just earning chips. The good without old ever being at risk. That is a like I said, yeah, stone cold killer. Right. Mike is literally never had to show down his hand. So right. nobody has a clue what he's, he's got. That's Besides awesome. Us. Well, I mean, we know, and they know. Right. Besides, the the world knows, but nobody at the table knows. Right. All right, well, thanks for watching. See you next time. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel. It helps us immensely. Other than that, thanks for watching. This is Ken. See you next time. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell.